Okay. All right, everybody. Good evening and welcome to Black Blockchain Consultants. I'm Cherie. I am the founder of the organization. I am here with my illustrious panel tonight. We have Tawana Rivers, Talisha Shine, Eric Spence, and Eric Guthrie here. And um, thank you to all of you for being here. Yes. Good evening. Thank you for having us. Here, everybody. So, Black Blockchain Consultants, for those of you who are new, because we have a lot of new members, um, we really look at four things. Number one is uh, how can we get blockchain jobs? If you want to get blockchain job, then you know we have uh, education around that. Number two is how can we start blockchain-based businesses? Because some of us want to be entrepreneurs, whether it's part-time or full-time. The third is how can we be better blockchain investors? We don't really talk about crypto so much as in the blockchain projects, the use cases, whether you want to invest time or money into a blockchain project. We really talk about how you can tell if a blockchain project is worth it. And the number four is how is we as a community, uh, how are we able to pull resources together and benefit from this $3.1 trillion industry, building wealth for ourselves and our families and the community. So those are the four pillars. This is what we always talk about are various aspects of us uh, achieving those goals. So I wanna welcome all the new people to BBC. And I uh, also wanna say, was it two weeks ago now? A uh, week and a half ago, we had a great blockchain virtual conference. If you did not see it, you missed a treat, but the replays are available. So you want to go to uh, blackblockchainconsultants.com, click courses, and you can get those. Uh, it's a full day session. We had a ton of panelists and interviews all about blockchain from our perspective, what's happening on the continent of Africa, what's happening in the Caribbean, what's happening with different use cases. A couple of billion dollar ideas were shared that day. So uh, you wanna be a part of that. And then also we have our uh, certification class as well. If you want to be, you wanna get a certificate of completion for blockchain, that is Black Blockchain Consultants. Again, click the courses link and you can get all of that information as well. And of course, if you are a guest tonight and you wanna be a part of the inner circle, we have a lot of great co uh, uh, conversations in our internal communication system called Flock. You can do that as well, Black Blockchain Consultants, and click on membership to learn more about the benefits of being a member. So uh, Jackie, you're on mute, but welcome tonight you're on mute so you're gonna to need to take yourself off mute <laughs> to speak um so we want to welcome all of all of my great panelists here tonight so uh tonight's conversation is not going to be put on facebook yet because we are talking about the facebook libra coin and what's all of this about? And what I wanted was for my panelists to be able to speak freely without us getting any kind of censorship or flags or whatever. And then after we have our conversation, um, if I think it's, if, you know, it's good to put on Facebook, I will. If not, then, oh well, you know, we have plenty of content that goes up on a daily basis on, on our Facebook channel. So, um, before I do that, I do want to give Eric and Jackie a chance to talk about their projects. Uh, Eric has a book coming out, and so does Jackie. And I just want to give you guys a couple of minutes to talk about, um, talk about what you are up to. So, uh, Eric, would you like to start? I would. Thank you. Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, it's wonderful to see your faces again, especially my graduates from my certified blockchain consulting course, uh, Tawana and Talisha. Um, we had a great couple of days together. We had a lot of fun. We learned a lot. I learned a lot. So I'm looking forward to working with you guys some more in the future. And by the way, I'm officially a member of BBC now. So um, I'm happy to be part of this group and uh, happy to build a, a better future for all of us in the blockchain. Uh, that being said, 
my book is due to drop on August 5th. And I'm, I'm working feverishly on final editing, uh, book cover, uh, marketing. So it, it's all beginning to come together. So this last like 30 to 45 days is the really nerve wracking part of writing a book. But uh, that being said, uh, things are going well. And uh, <laughs> hopefully they, they, uh, it comes out well. Uh, I have a whole bunch of book signings lined up already. Uh, Dallas, August 7th, I'm doing a speech and a book signing at the Lesson Government Conference, the National Conference. Thousands of people attend that, so I was honored to get a speaking slot there. Uh, in D.C., September 11th at the Jamaican Embassy. Uh, it's not a very big space, it's invite only, so if you want to come, please let me know and I can get you an invite. Uh, September 12th and 13th at Congressional Black Caucus. If you haven't attended CBC yet, especially if you're in DC area or in a DMV, it's a must attend. And I'm trying to bring the blockchain there. I bought it there a little bit last year, but now that I have a book and a platform, I'm, I'm likely to get at least a panel, if not a presentation slot at CBC. Actually, we did, did a, a panel with a consensus, did a blocks and blockchain panel there last year. And that was really good. So uh, if you wanna to go to CBC, that's where I'll be for those two days, September 12th and 13th. I'll be in Raleigh, September 19th at North Carolina Central, doing a speech at the college and doing a blockchain book signing there, kind of like a mini summit. It's only like a half a day, but they really want to bring the blockchain to uh, UNCC. Uh, in Charlotte, September 28th and 21st, as you can see, I'm very busy now. Uh, so I'll be doing a, a series of book signings there. If you know about Barbara Scotia College, it's a small HBCU in Concord, North Carolina. Um, they've agreed to host a blockchain conference there a day and a half. They're gonna host it, they're gonna take care of all the amenities. All I have to do, I shouldn't say all I have to do, but I had to coordinate, get speakers, and create agenda, and make sure to market it. So uh, if you're looking, if you're an expert in this field, if you have a product or a service, it's not really a sale, but more of an informational, let me know, and we'll put you in as uh, consideration for a panelist slot at Barbara Scotia College in Concord, North Carolina. Uh, the dates for that are in October. I don't have off the top of my head, but it's in mid-October. Uh, internationally, uh, I'm working with Brazil to do a blockchain speech and book signing there the last week in August. And I'm talking with the Central Bank of Barbados. We're talking about doing something there in February. And I'm talking with uh, Peru. We're talking about doing something there in mid-January. So I'm doing domestic and international books, money, speeches, and trainings, Peru and Barbados. And uh, 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 Brazil will be a blockchain consultant training as well. Maybe not the full week, but definitely at least the foundations course. So I'm mixing the book signings, the trainings, Everything's kind of going to one or trying to bring it to, you know, our people and bring it to the people of the world that normally would not have this kind of access. I'm also going to start focusing heavily on churches because sometimes our church is the only way we get really good information. And uh, I'm going to start uh, approaching churches with enough of a congregation to be able to uh, uh, have an impact with the information. So I'll stop there and, and see if there's any questions or, you know, engage in the discussion as it goes forward. Great, great. And if you need anybody to carry uh, anything for you in Barbados, <laughs> I'm your girl. Yes. Well, listen, as far as I'm concerned, if you want to be a panelist, you're in. All you have to do is just let me know your, uh, your availability. And uh, we, have, we have a two-prong approach. We're going to do speeches at the University of Barbados so we can educate the students. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a professional one at the Central Bank of Barbados for professionals and for um, folks that are in the, the finance and, and technology space. So we're trying to do both ends, both the students end as well as the professional end. Yeah, and Malcolm as is asking, what's the name of your book? Blockchain or Die. Blockchain or Die. So is it blockchainordie.com if there's a pre-list or how do people get on a pre-list? So it's blockchainordie.org. And uh, yeah, so I have a Facebook page now, Blockchain or Die on Facebook and Blockchain or Die on Instagram. Okay. Um, so the pre-list, actually, I've been doing emails. So if you want to be in a pre-list, just uh, shoot me an email at Eric. I'll, I'll type it in the chat. Um, 
or I'll look in the chat and see if anyone's interested in the pre-list and I'll make sure they get your information. But so far I have hundreds and hundreds of people on the, on the pre-list. So it's also a really good start. I mean, I didn't do any of this with my book, Diversify or Die, mm -hmm. um, but this time I'm doing it in a much more marketing focus and it, it's so far it's been paying off some good dividends. Good, good. And I just want to say that, um, Hopefully, Eric will be an inspiration to some people. He rattled off a whole lot of speaking engagements he's getting and, and opportunities he's getting. I can tell you as someone who's written a book as well, it does open doors for you that just being a regular speaker does not. So if that is your calling, if you are trying to be a speaker at that level, then consider writing a book. So... Uh, with that, Jackie has also written a book, but her target market is a little different. So Jackie, you have the floor. Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good. Good, good, good. I did a little short presentation, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it up here because this is my first time. So I need to hit share, you should, right? You should see at the bottom, it should say share. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. And then you click on the uh, thing you want to share. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We got a presentation and everything. Great. Just, just briefly. The title of my book is Blockchain Basics Teen Edition. And this is sort of what the cover looks like, but it's still um, in the making. And it says coming in June. And I actually think that's going to be coming in July because we're not going to be done by the end of the week. And this guy um, is a, a teenager in high school, and he's, he wants to know what in the world is blockchain. And this young lady is one of his peers, and she says, well, I, I, don't, I don't know what blockchain is. I don't know. So my response to them would be, you can find out today if you get my book, Blockchain Basics Teen Edition, and you will gain a pra practical understanding of blockchain technology learn about blockchain mining, learn the types of blockchains and the characteristics of blockchains, and learn about education and careers in blockchain. This is my table of contents. Um, it looks like it's a lot of chapters, but the chapters are kind of short because I'm talking to teenagers. <laughs> and, and I know they're not gonna read, read pages and pages and pages in the chapter. And last of all, um, I'd like for you guys, everybody, everybody, just everybody to sign up. You can email me at info at blockchainlearningcenter.com. I'll put it in the chat for folks to see. Just send me your name and your email address. And as soon as the book is published, I will be able to let you know. And that's it. Congratulations. Jackie, I want to say congratulations. Right. Very right. proud of you. You know, hold on. Let me just say something. Jackie, I need this book to give to my sons. See, because they're going to listen from you. Right? When I'm talking, it's just dad. <laughs> they start walking out the other room. I'm like, wait a minute, we all going. Like, oh, they're talking about it again. I'm out. I'm out of here. I know. <laughs> it's the same way in my family, and it's not just the kids, it's the adults too. They're like, oh, are you coming with this blockchain thing again, Mom? We're, you know, we're out of here. So I know exactly what you mean. Oh, yeah, I'm going to give this to them. Like, hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wonderful, wonderful. Eric, I'll put your name on the list. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And as for this, Eric, uh, Jake and I had a really long conversation right after I joined uh, BBC. And uh, I think her book is amazing. It's just what we need. And any panel discussion that I have that's going to involve young adults or teens, I'm going to invite Jackie to be on there because, you know, I think her book is really going to speak to audience that, first of all, my book doesn't speak to. And mm -hmm. second of all, needs that kind of information. So we need to work together. We need to provide each other opportunities. Uh, and Jackie's top of my list of anything that involves anything that's teen or young adult. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. And um, one thing, Jackie, if you would please put that email address in the chat for people, because okay. uh, people are asking about it. The second thing that I want to say is this is how BBC supports member businesses. Um, both Eric and Jackie came to me. They didn't even ask to be on the panel tonight. They were just telling me about their books. And I'm saying to them, 
you know, you all should come on the panel tonight, talk about what you're doing. So we want to support your businesses. You all know that even though we have BCI and the Center for Blockchain Studies, that I never ever force people to be a part of those businesses. You're more than welcome to hang up your own shingle and say, this is what I'm doing, Cherie. And, you know, we will support you in whatever way that we can. So uh, if you, whether you have a book that you want to do or a podcast or you want to start a, a specific blockchain platform that solves a problem or whatever, you know, please let us know because our goal here is to elevate everyone's business so that all of us can be successful. So uh, with that, Talisha, Eric Spence, Talana, do you have anything else to say uh, before we jump into the convo for tonight? Uh, I'll say one more thing. I forgot to mention that I'm working with UDC Law School to do a uh, blockchain, another blockchain training course. Okay. Um, so they're, they're really excited to actually be part of this blockchain movement and the Cogent Law Group, which is I'm a partner in the Cogent Law Group as an attorney. Uh, we're designing a very special course for uh, blockchain and government contracting. Okay. Uh, so there's governments are beginning, government agencies are beginning to actually experience the need for blockchain consulting. Mm -hmm. If you look on FBO.gov, you will see some of them have posted uh, blockchain uh, consulting and opportunities on FBO.gov. But a lot of them are happening through backdoor channels. So uh, I'm partnering with a government contractor uh, that with a great deal of experience in this field to design uh, the same week-long training, but we're going to do a day just for government contracting and how to become experience in the blockchain and become a government contractor, perhaps do some contracting first, but, you know, um, get that trillion dollar US dollar money that's out there. Mm. If you attended my course, uh, the, the tenant that attended, you don't have to attend the full uh, five days again, you could attend just that one day for that one day price. So it's, it's a great opportunity that I want to make sure I open up to all of you. Uh, that if you don't want to do the full training as a, uh, a certified consultant, that one day for, for government contracting is all you need. We're due to drop that in the October timeframe, so I'll keep BBC notified. Great. Fantastic. Anybody else have anything else to say? Just congratulations to both Eric and Jackie. I cannot wait to read both your books. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else before we start talking about Facebook? <laughs> All righty then. So I'm going to share my screen here with you. And we're going to read through two articles and a graphic that uh, Tawana sent me. And I know this article is long, but if you're anything like me, you heard that Libra existed, but you really didn't know anything about it. I started reading up about it about 15 minutes before we came on, literally. Um, because I've just been so swamped. So you and I are going to read a lot of this together as a group. And um, panelists, you always know that you can chime in as I'm, as I'm reading through stuff. But that is what our conversation, um, sorry, Libra is our conversation for tonight. So if you've been under the blockchain rock and you don't know this, Facebook has announced a new cryptocurrency called Libra. And a lot of people within the blockchain and crypto industry has a lot to say about it. So uh, this again is a long article, but it gives you the basics and it's from TechCrunch. It was one of the better articles that I could find that could give us the basics because every other <laughs> article I read was just like, bash, 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 but no basics. So, um, so let's figure out what is happening at Facebook. And this was seven days ago that this dropped. So one of the things that happened was Facebook dropped a 12 page white paper. So if you are interested in reading the original white paper, you can do that as well. But they're coming out with a new cryptocurrency called Libra, which lets you buy things or send money to people with nearly zero fees. Well, nearly zero fees is blockchain 101. So, okay. Um, you'll pseudonymously buy 
or cash out your Libra online or at local exchange points like grocery stores and spend it using interoperable third-party wallet apps or Facebook's own Calibra wallet that will be built into WhatsApp, Messenger, and its own app. Um, so again, I told you they released their white paper and its test net for working out the kinks of its blockchain system before the public launch in the first half of 2020. So it looks like it's gonna take a year for them to pull this off um, if they don't have you know, issues. So they're saying here, Facebook won't fully control Libra, but instead get just a single vote in its governance, like other founding members of the Libra Association, including Visa, Uber, and Andreessen Horowitz, which have invested at least $10 million in each of the project's operations. Uh, the association will promote the open source Libra blockchain and developer platform with its move programming language, plus sign up businesses to accept Libra for payment and even give customers discounts or rewards. So they're launching a subsidiary company called Calibra that handles its crypto dealings and protects users' privacy by never mingling your Libra payments with your Facebook data so it can't be used for ad targeting. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, your real identity won't be tied to your publicly visible transactions, but Facebook Calibra and other founding members of the Libra Association will earn interest on the money users cash in that is held in reserve to keep value of Libra stable. Now, did you all read that sentence? Let me read it again. Read it again. <laughs> read it again. Facebook and Calibra and other founding members of the Libra Association, that's all these rich folk here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Will earn interest on the money users cash in that is held in reserve to keep the value of Libra stable. Comments about that one sentence. So it makes you think immediately bank, financial institution. Like immediately you think a, a new financial system. It's even worse than that because at least in our traditional bank, I get a quarter of a percent. <laughs> yeah, but okay, but here's the problem I have though too. Oh, wait a minute. I'm depositing my money so I can buy Libra Mm -hmm. Why do they get the interest? Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. It's yeah. my money. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. It's my <laughs> money. <laughs> I'm giving to you. Why is the interest going to you? And you're already rich off my. <laughs> and I have, I have thing? something yeah, to say. Cartel. It's the same thing over and over again. It yeah. <laughs> which, which, you know. The part of the reason why I didn't want this on Facebook was yeah. <laughs> if you believe that Facebook is not going to be looking and dabbling on your data and comparing your Facebook yeah. public to your Facebook private, I got a bridge to sell you. I think one comment that I would make, there's need to be a distinction. I think, we're, again, this is where semantics come in mm -hmm. and we're, we're mixing and matching things. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's not a cryptocurrency at this point because it is just simply digitizing what we already have. Correct. So we're right. talking about the digital currency space. So we're not really talking about the whole entire process. Now, again, because it does have to sit on a different platform, mm -hmm. that does make the intermingling a little bit more difficult because mm -hmm. there isn't a way at this point to merge those two. Because what would happen is there would have to be a large import of all that present data, which is like what they have, what, 2.38 billion monthly users. That's a lot of data and a lot of metadata that would have to be actually merged. You so think that they are not building this back system to I'm do that? They're not. I'm just simply saying, like, let's get perspective of what we have currently. Mm -hmm. and again, to project, that's where the, the semantics come in. Our systems right now are limited to what we're doing. And this is where I think we're taking apples and trying to make them into oranges, is we're using the same exact premise in order to create a digitized version of it. This is all that this is at this point. So again, we're having a, a conversation about 
basically a system that is just totally digitized in its manner and will be delivering something in a digital currency perspective. Yeah. And I'll say two quick things. The first mm -hmm. is that, I mean, this really flies in the face of the real reason why cryptocurrencies was created. It was supposed to be right. an open source, decentralized platform that provides the ability to uh, interchange value between people or between peer to peer mm -hmm. and not have to worry about going through a centralized structure like mm -hmm. Facebook. That's the one. I mean, Facebook is bigger than most of the banks out there. Uh, the second thing is that when you say the word, I'm going to put on my legal hat for a second. When you say the word uh, getting interest, they're going to make interest out that it becomes a sort of an investment. And I think they're going to have to go through the SEC to make sure that they're not going to view this as a, a security. Mm -hmm. uh, because someone's making money off it and making money off it by many of other, other people. And that in itself, I think is going to have to pass through a lot of SEC muster. So, I mean, we'll see how it plays out, but you know, I, I think that they're going to face some significant hurdles going forward. And, you know, we're going to face some backlash from the crypto and blockchain, like us right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, like, yeah. community. Cause this is not what it was designed for. All mm -hmm. this is for them is a play to get more money yes. and a play to have more relevance in some areas where they were really getting slammed publicly, which is the ads and the using of the Facebook data through bad, bad actors. Well, they say later on in this article how it, this is all going to come back to add more ad uh, advertising dollars. So you know, hold, hold your horses <laughs> in terms of that. Uh, but Narisha says, sounds like Facebook is a bank. Facebook does not have a great track record on privacy. Uh, Malcolm is playing devil's advocate. He's saying, does this imply that the cryptocurrency market is unstable and they are trying to control the Libra environment? Um, they are trying to control the Libra environment. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, and part of what is happening here, they haven't said it yet in this article, is that they are tying their Libra currency to fiat currencies to make it stable. So basically they've said uh, cryptocurrency is traditionally a very unstable um, market, we're going to solve that by making it stable. And then what they've also said, at least in this TechCrunch article, is thus more people will feel comfortable uh, getting into crypto because the market is more stable. Uh, so they're basically saying that Facebook is looking at making this a, a global, um, what do you call it, adoption. So, so if, if, if they're being backed by regular everyday money, yeah. how are they different from, from what we're already doing? I mean, it's the same thing. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's part of the question. That's, that's part of the question. That's yeah, part of the question. That, so that, we're going to finish reading. We got currency backing, and this is, again, there's investment in securities that are backing it. So again, this is the difference and a very specific difference from a crypto, um, you know, a crypto asset. It is right. not that way. It's being delivered digitally, which again can be analogous to a cryptocurrency, but in fact, it is different. And this is where they're trying to make it into a stable coin that it has some viability in our current market value. You know, and, and they had they had other ways they could have gone, like Hyperledger. And even Amazon, they've released platforms where you can learn to use cryptocurrencies and blockchain by using their products for free, mm -hmm. right? So they could have said, okay, let's provide resources to educate the masses with our very impressive you know, reach globally, but they didn't do that. They just created a, a, a pseudo investment that you know, I think, unfortunately, is gonna have some level of success, but is also gonna have some problems. Yeah. Well, it's not going to just have some level of success because they've got the the um, brand recognition on their side, right? So when mm -hmm. when the news broke on the Today Show, my phone rang <laughs> ten times back. <laughs> so when we think our family and friends are not listening to us, they really are. Because <laughs> ten people called me and were like, "They talking about cryptocurrency or you know on, on, on the Today <laughs> Show and Facebook about <laughs> cryptocurrency," and and that's all I heard all day from people who are not you know kind of 
engulfed in what we're engulfed in day to day. Mm -hmm. And so Facebook has that on their side, right? So everyone who uses Facebook now, their introduction to crypto and blockchain is this. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. dangerous because we all know this right. is not the introduction they should have. Mm -hmm. and, and, but it's but it's going to take off. They'll make money. It's ultimately, in my opinion, a takeover of the financial system. This right. is not about cryptocurrency. Those people, the hundred partners they have, and all of those mm -hmm. big names, when they sat around that table and had these discussions, this was about takeover. This was not about mass adoption from an education standpoint. This was how can we be the bank? That's yeah. all this conversation was. Because, and, and I didn't, I only read like the first three pages of the white paper, because um, I started it this evening. A, but when you, when you even look at those first three pages, it's just very, very telling. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how the banks respond. Mm -hmm. Like, do they get on board and say, well, you know, we can't compete with this. This might be, this might be bigger than us, right? This has the potential to be bigger than us. Do they become the hundred and, you know, 27th partners or, or do they try to fight back somehow? That's going to be the interesting um, thing to watch. Well, the white paper did leave that part out. So the, mm -hmm. the transferable uh, vehicle by which the individuals obtain it, as well as how they distribute them through other vendors and marketers was not highlighted because I did read all 12 pages of it. Mm -hmm. and that was definitely um, missing <laughs> the how. It talks in great length and I, I think a lot of superfluous aspects of this is why it's a good thing, why it's helpful. You know, it definitely has the, the marketing ploy of the unbankable and it uses those key visceral words that you want to hear. But at the same time, there is no how. So that's the, the point is like, this is where we're running into, this may be a great idea and it is an introductory asset to most people. They would see it as like, oh, this is cryptocurrency or this is whatever. But again, they are used to exchanging money in Messenger and WhatsApp. So mm -hmm. we're just, it's a ploy. Again, it's just moving something to another part. You're just moving pieces around. We're not really talking about the true essence and the science that we were, you know, that truly what the transferable aspect of cryptocurrency are. We're missing that part. I think that's the only, I take issue with that is that we're missing this whole education piece that mm -hmm. is just like, oh, I could just do the same thing. It's just like a different card. It's not Visa, mm -hmm. it's MasterCard. Right. That's all this is. Right. Now it's a Libra card, yeah. Right. <laughs> Since you read the whole white paper, I read an article, it wasn't an article, it was someone's post, where they were debating whether it was even using blockchain based on something written in the white paper. Correct. It again is, I'm not going to say vague, they just um, don't enunciate very articulately what it is. Again, there's not a lot of how involved. It's what we can tell you all about. It's great. It's wonderful what it's going to do and how it's going to transform. No how. I don't understand that part. And that was what I was waiting for as I was reading like, so what is, where do I get this? How do I get it and how do I use it? Those mm -hmm. questions are not answered in the way. Interesting. Yeah. So let's read this next paragraph here because this was going into a lot of what uh, Talisha was saying and I was saying earlier. Facebook's audacious bid to create a global digital currency that promotes financial inclusion for the unbanked actually has more privacy and decentralization built in than many expected. Instead of trying to dominate Libra's future or squeeze tons of cash out immediately, Facebook is playing the long game by pulling payments into its online domain. Facebook's VP of blockchain, David Marcus, explained that the company's motives and the tie-in with its core revenue source during a briefing at San Francisco's historic Mint building. If more commerce happens, then more small businesses will sell more on and off the platform, and they'll want to buy more ads on the platform so it will be good for our ads business. <laughs> I mean, you know what? And, and here's one more thing, too, that because um, I saw someone post it the other day that although Facebook is saying, hey, we're not going to share your data, if you read it, the transactional data, is when, as soon as you execute a transaction, that data is going to be shared. Mm -hmm. So they're, yeah, so they're not, 
Yeah, so, and you're kind of going, okay, well, <laughs> why am I going to hold this? Like, like, why am I going to hold it if I'm not going to actually use it? Um, hmm. and, you know, and, and there's also, I, and I, and I got to be frank, I'm, I'm really irritated that Facebook even uses the word decentralization when the nodes themselves are, they have to put in $10 million or these billion dollar corporations. I'm like, that is not, that is <laughs> not decentralization at all. So, um, yeah, I, I just, my, you see where I'm going with this. <laughs> of course. One of the articles that I read, I think I have it up here for later on, if we get to it, was the fact that uh, traditionally with Bitcoin, um, and Ethereum to a certain point, there wasn't one central company, one central person, one central hub to kind of uh, yank on their coattails and say, no, you know, slow down, you can't do this. Bitcoin took a life of its own because you had a lot of people involved globally. With Facebook, however, you've got um, this one company that's really out there, and that's one of the reasons why Auntie Maxine was right. able to say, hold your horses, was mm -hmm. because you have one company that's trying to dominate and do everything that they can to dominate. So, um, yeah. so it ends up being a flaw for them in a way, un unless they could buy their way out of it. You know, it ends up being a flaw for them that they did do this so centralized mm -hmm. and not do it. I'm sorry? The arrogance that exists that, you know, okay, I'm going to separate myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new company. I'm going to give it a different name. I still have <laughs> ownership, but it's different. So you can trust that company. <laughs> Just the arrogance behind it all. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> you know what? And, 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 and you know what? Me, you know what? To honestly, I'm right there with you. Let me add one more thing too, and and this is the thing you have to understand too about Mark Zuckerberg. Now, listen. What they're going to say is, no, Facebook only gets one vote of the hundred. Okay, whatever. Here's the big issue too I have with it. If you ever do any reading and studying on Mark Zuckerberg, that guy makes unilateral decisions. Mm -hmm. Like if you see that if if. When it comes down to whatever content is deemed offensive for their platform or whatever, like Zuckerberg just makes that decision and just says, like, that's it. And I'm mm -hmm. going, okay, well, who gave you that power to think that you're this all-knowing being that can that knows what's offensive to everyone? And, like, allowing – and then now and, – and think about it, that you have that kind of centralized wow. control and power – and then we're going to turn over what now? The global financial system? Our money over to that person? Like, it's, yeah. it's I, you know, I also think it's that boyish look that he has. Yeah. He looks like he's not going to be a threat or not going to be, um, the only thing word, term I could think of now is vicious, but vicious is not quite the term I'm, I'm thinking of. He, he doesn't look like he's going to be as just hard hitting you know, as he is, but he is a ruthless, that's the term I want, ruthless. Yes. This 100%, is 100%, person. you gotta look at them. When they see a competitor, they do it, they either do two things, they either try to buy you out, buy or they you. steal your tech, period. Right. Like, we saw that with them, with um, Snapchat, remember they tried to buy Snapchat mm -hmm. out, they pushed it back and we don't wanna do that. So then that's when, of course, Facebook, they had already acquired Instagram, then that's when they did the Instagram stories, slams Snapchat, and they're in, you know, now, you know, they're on their way out eventually. Yeah. Um, and, and, and when you look at someone who operates like that, it's kind of strange that, you know, their positioning is him almost as his, uh, as his humanitarian. If you ever go look at the Libra site, when I looked at the Libra site, I just, I, I had to get off there real quick because I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get mad because you know because because you know like they have like this African woman there and this villain. Uh -huh. okay. All right, <laughs> my blood pressure up. <laughs> so, so, no. so you know, and that sort of thing where I'm like, oh, that is exactly what you just said, Shree. Very vicious. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's 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 he is he is, and he can get away with it a little bit longer because I honestly think it's that boyish face. Um, yeah, so let's continue reading here. 
Uh, in cryptocurrencies, Facebook saw both a threat and an opportunity. They held the promise of disrupting how things are bought and sold by eliminating transaction fees common with credit cards. Well, that's a blockchain function, so spare me. Um, that comes dangerously close to Facebook's ad business that influences what is bought and sold. If a competitor like Google or an upstart built a popular coin and could monitor the transactions, they'd learn what people buy and could muscle in on the billions spent on Facebook marketing. Meanwhile, the 1.7 billion people who lack bank accounts might choose whoever offers them a financial services alternative as their online identity provider too. That's another thing Facebook wants to be. Mm -hmm. So we, I don't know if people uh, remember this, years ago, Walmart was trying to do something similar. They wanted to have banks in Walmart stores. Do people remember this? Yep. To handle and work with the unbanked. And it got stopped by some government agency because they would end up being too powerful, being able to take all of these, the, you know, the unbanked money, poor people money. They would come in, you know, on Friday with their checks, their money orders, whatever, mm -hmm. and it would have ended up being a big mess. So now you have Facebook trying to do the same thing on a global scale. Um, and they're going to be able to sell five to 10 times more in ads because they're going to be able to take that data and push it out to small businesses, not just small businesses, all businesses. All businesses. They're, they're really, they're saying small businesses in here, but that's not what they mean. They mean the big businesses yes. to say, these people are encroaching on your territory. Um, you, know you know how dangerous this is to, to think about it? Because uh -huh, one of the things, you. if you've ever dealt with Facebook in their customer service, like, when they make a decision, there's no recourse on it. Like they made the decision and that's it. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna get back to you anymore, that's it. So imagine your money then where something happens and they felt that you've made this transaction that they deem for whatever reason, you know, shouldn't, you know, that they have questions about, which is kind of funny because like my money, I do whatever I wanna do with it, but whatever. And to think that they just freeze your account and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, I mean, how dangerous is that to, I mean, so let me, let me pick it up that for a second. And and the bottom line is, again, speaking from a legal perspective, uh, and someone said maybe it was to want to talk about Facebook and and uh, how this is going to roll out to be a huge success. They've got to face two major challenges. First, I think this is going to look like a bank. Second, they're going to have to face antitrust laws. I agree. Because the banks are going to say, no fair, that's a bank, you can't play in this field. We're engaging either the, the, the SEC or the banking regulations to either make you be in compliance with where the bank's supposed to be or you're out. The second piece is, since this is, we agree this is all really decentralized, right? One major hack into this, and this whole thing is gonna be a huge PR issue for them, it's going to be a nightmare, and they've had a number of PR numbers, as we all know, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I, I'm not at all convinced that this is going to go nearly as smoothly as I think it is. They have some major regulatory issues to overcome first, and they have a major PR campaign if they hack even once. They will have to deal with that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know with the PR though, I've seen their uh, stock prices go up three, four months afterwards, you know, so um, I, I'm not so certain that the PR would issue would last long enough for it to really put a dent in, in their business. Maybe not, but they've never held people's money like this before. This is the first time they're actually holding people's money that are not buying ads. Or, or buy or is selling anything on on you know online like a books or yeah whatever. This is them holding people's money that they use to buy groceries, mm -hmm. to pay the mortgage. Mm -hmm. right? So the stakes are going to be much much higher. So you may be right, Sheree, but on the other hand, this is really uncharted territory, mm -hmm. and one major misstep, and it may be a problem for them to recover from it. 
Yeah, because yeah, if they're already trust issues, Eric's right. A hacking, I didn't think about that. That's that's genius. Can you can you imagine what the hackers are doing right now? Oh yes. Yeah. Again, I think another consideration is that this is again theory. At no point in time are we looking at this as, like I said, it it, it is announced that it's going to take a year to even roll this out. But that can mean this could change as we all know how things, you know, a white paper has, you know, some information and then it changes. This could just be buying time for something totally different. So that's it. I think there's since it's not well flushed out, which is something that kind of gave me that indication when I was reading, is that it could just be something like, hey, we're doing something over here, but we're actually working on something else over here. So I think all the the chatter is what is necessary because it does bring in people and the curiosity and just again that bated breath of like what's going to happen and everybody wants to be a part mm -hmm. whether it's like i said they roll it out this way or if they pull back and just say hey guess what we're just going to do our own coin it's going to be cool you guys are just going to use it in facebook and whatsapp and you can buy ads with it Mm -hmm. That would still bring a whole lot of people that would never have come to this point of understanding and, again, being a part of the hype. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that there will be some people who will just pay attention a lot more because Facebook has uh, attacked, attack, attached sorry, themselves to cryptocurrency um, or calling it a cryptocurrency. So, yeah. Okay, so it's saying here that Facebook wants to make Libra the evolution of PayPal. It's hoping Libra will become a simpler to set up, more ubiquitous as a payment method, more efficient with fewer fees, more accessible to the unbanked, more flexible thanks to developers, and more long-lasting thanks to decentralization. So. Um, I know. Yeah. Right. Not, no, it isn't. Uh, they're saying here to take send money abroad is an average of seven percent. So, my thought is, even if they say, okay, it's traditionally seven percent, we will cut it down to three percent. They'll get a whole lot of people who say, mm. well, that sounds good to me. My family mm. in whatever country is on Facebook anyway, so I'll just send it through here. Um, so. Let's see what else we have here. This is, like I said, this is a long article, um, but, but I will uh, let people see it as well. It's in TechCrunch, so if you really want to read through and get a, a good understanding, I think it's, it's a, a balanced article. I don't think they've put too much spin on this. So um, let's see here. We've kind of talked about how, how it works uh, roughly. Um, They've got a new crypto oligarchy. Okay, yeah, this is what I want to go through here. So this is the Libra Association. These are the people that are tied up in this. Uh, Facebook knew people wouldn't trust it to wholly steer the cryptocurrency they use, and it also wanted to help to spur adoption. So the social network recruited the founding members of the Libra Association, a nonprofit or not-for-profit, which oversees the development of the token, the reserve of real world assets that gives it value and the governance rules of the blockchain. If we were controlling it, very few people would want to jump on and make it theirs, says Marcus. Oh. Each founding member paid a minimum of $10 million to join and optionally became a validator node operator, gain one vote in the Libra Association Council, and be entitled to a share proportionate to their investment of the dividends from interest earned on the Libra Reserve into which users pay fiat currency to receive Libra. What a racket. Okay. So we could already, before you continue reading, just knowing that they pay $10 million a piece. Mm -hmm. The minimum. The valuation yeah, on the me. minimum that they the pay. Minimum that they pay. Right. Yeah. The but minimum. The value. What? Can you imagine how much money these jokers think they're gonna make? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? And, and imagine. And we already know. I'm just telling you, be prepared. The ads, even though you know, 
you know, many of us, whatever. And listen, I'm not going to beat up on anyone if you use Libra. That's fine. Everyone, whatever you decide to do. That's your own sovereignty. But, you know, I know myself I won't be using Libra. But what we do know is going to happen, be prepared for a wave of ads. Super Bowl mm. ads. I mean, we're going to see nonstop ad play. We're going to see this thing everywhere. All of those partners, you have the Visa network. Everybody's going to be wherever Visa is, you're going to see Libra. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to try to brand this thing so much to the point that, you know, you just can't avoid it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So let's read who the 28 soon-to-be founding members of the association are. MasterCard, PayPal. So PayPal basically is trying to make sure they don't get knocked off themselves. Okay. <laughs> PayU, NASPERS FinTech Arm, Stripe, Visa, Bookings, Holdings, eBay, Facebook, Farfetch, Lyft. Oh, that's surprising. Mercado, Pago, Spotify, Uber. I heard Uber was in it. Iliad, Vodafone, in tech, uh, Telecom. Anchorage, Bison Trails, Coin, Coinbase, okay. Zappo. <laughs> Uh, Andreessen Horowitz, that's a huge company. They invested, uh, Mr. I think Andreessen was the one that was the co-founder of LinkedIn, one of them. Um, Breakthrough Initiatives, Ribbit Capital, Thrive Capital, Union Squares Venture, and nonprofits, Creative Destruction Lab, Kiva, Kiva's really big, Mercy Corps, and Women's World Banking. And you know, they have to throw the women in there. Um, so <laughs> these are the people. <laughs> these are the yeah, these are the founders. But I think I read something where they already are up to a hundred partners. Yes. In mm -hmm. addition to the founders. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which means if they have a hundred people that put in ten million dollars, they got a billion dollars minimum. This is the reason why these companies don't have to go to the bank or the markets or anything like that to get funded you know, which is why we as black people have to be able to create networks like this, where someone comes up with an idea like this, a, a worthwhile idea, and we have a whole bunch of people that could throw money in it. And all of a sudden, that person or that that company has raised a million, two million, five million dollars to mm -hmm. do whatever it is to get through whatever, you know, milestone they're trying to get through. Um, this is where the power is. You know? This is a corporate, a corporate takeover <laughs> of the global money supply. Of the, of yeah. money supply. Absolutely. Yeah. So Facebook says it helps to reach 100 founding members before the official Libra launch. And this was seven days ago. So I do think Tawana's right. I think I read that they did do it, uh, including direct competitors like Google and Twitter. Um, Libra Association is <laughs> based in Geneva, Switzerland. So that means they don't want any government interference and will meet biannually. Um, the country was chosen for its neutral status and strong support of financial innovation, including blockchain tech. Um, yeah, okay. So who gets a vote? Uh, we kind of talked about that already, so. We'll <laughs> did you just say a non-for-profit organization? <laughs> yes. <laughs> These people, <laughs> I'm telling you, these people know <laughs> how to set stuff up. Everything. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. So here's a, a, uh, something else we'll read here. I know this is a long article, but we really should know this. Um, uh, leave a reserve, one for one. Each time someone cashes in a dollar or their respective local currency, that money goes into the Libra reserve. So they're going to be hoarding dollars mm -hmm. in euros <laughs> mm -hmm. and an equivalent value of libra is minted and doled out to that person if someone cashes out from the libra association the libra they give back are destroyed or burned and they receive the equivalent value of their local cur uh, currency back that means there's always 100 percent of the value of the libra in circulation collateralized with real world assets in the libra reserve it never runs fractional. And unlike pegged stable coins, 
that are tied to a single currency like the dollar, Libra maintains its own value, though that should cash out to roughly the same amount of currency over time. So here's what I see. I see that they're going to take your money, they're going to put it with JP Morgan Chase mm-hmm. and these big banks, they're going to get a half a percent, quarter percent, you know, whatever in interest and that's how they're going to make their money from this thing. Does everybody understand that? Mm-hmm. Understand how monetary policy works? <laughs> so all of a sudden they go to JP Morgan Chase and they said we have a trillion dollars in currency, euro, yen, dollar, you know, pesos, whatever. Um, and they're going to be able to negotiate higher overnight rates for all of this currency that they're going to be holding. And who does this now? Banks. Yes. And yeah. The difference is you get a small percentage that you're parking your money at a bank. Mm-hmm. You get Jack Scrapple do from Libra? Nope. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Except the ability to buy stuff. Yeah, like you're giving the interest. Which, which we money. already have. I mean, you know, we already it have makes the ability. No sense. Yeah. Why yeah. are we giving the interest? Why are we giving the interest to them and none of that is returning back to us? Exactly. Yeah. I'm about to come back to this later. <laughs> So, the, so, I mean, the real reason is going to be uh, lack of knowledge. People are, not, people are not going to be educated about this. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, you know, and again, um, they're, they're if they do a good enough bankable, so I'm again, if a person is unbanked, they've never had to pay interest. They don't know what they're missing. That's a yeah. good point. You're That's right. a good point. Very good point. It's, it's really taking advantage of people, and it's how the poor get poorer. Yeah. and the rich get richer yes. so um it's the illusion of access yes mm-hmm. exactly the illusion of access you are oof you yeah are right. <laughs> mm-hmm. so it's saying here when libra association members join and pay their 10 million dollar minimum they receive libra investment tokens their share of the total tokens translates into a portion of the dividend they earn off of interest on assets in reserve. Those dividends are only paid out after Libra Association uses interest to pay for operating expenses, investments in the ecosystem, engineering research, and grants to nonprofits and other organizations. So I see two things with this sentence. Number one, they are going to use the interest to operate their company. They don't even have to dip into the principal to operate this company, okay? Number two, they're going to give money to nonprofits and other organizations to sugarcoat. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that humanitarianism stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we give, yeah. From the interest that they're getting from your money. Mm -hmm. Or, Or sorry, from the $10 million that's held that really isn't going to be used at all because they're just using it in the interest. Okay. Um, this interest is part of what attracted the Libra Association's members. If Libra uh-huh. becomes popular and many people carry a large balance of the uh, currency, the reserve will grow huge and earn significant interest. Uh, then they're saying it's built for speed. So they're able to do a thousand transactions per second, okay, versus Bitcoin doing seven transactions per second. So that'll be something that they promote. You, you know what's interesting? How much is the Visa network? I thought the Visa network wasn't it like faster? Yeah, yeah way faster, right? Wasn't it like a hundred thousand per second or something like that? Yeah, they, they'll probably increase over time. It's probably just the next evolution in blockchain. Yeah. So. Another big thing here, transactions on Libra cannot be reversed. If an attack compromises over one third of the validator nodes causing a fork in the blockchain, the Libra Association says it will temporarily halt transactions, figure out the extent of the damage and recommend software updates to resolve the fork. Transactions aren't entirely free. They incur a tiny fraction of a cent fee to pay for gas that covers the cost of processing the transfer of funds, similar to with Ethereum. Um, 
fee is negligible to most consumers, but I've been talking about this for a while. I've been saying that we should create something that's like a PayPal where we get to nip a couple of cents mm -hmm. off everyone's transaction. Mm -hmm. now, now this is all they're doing. Yeah. Um, gas charges will deter bad actors from creating millions of transactions to power spam or denial of service attacks. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm concerned about transactions can't be reversed. No. I, I don't right. know about that. Um, you want to talk about a PR nightmare, Eric, Eric Guthrie talked about this. The PR nightmare is if an attack happens and they don't give people their money back. Mm -hmm. that, now that will be a PR nightmare. Yep. Oh, with no recourse. With no recourse. <laughs> like, yeah. That's it. You know, they just move on. At least the FDIC insures you to $100,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They insure you per bank. So you can spend than zero cent. I'm, I'm telling you, Mark my words, this is going to hit major regulatory issues in the United States. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely agree. Um, so let's see here. So the coding language, they came up with their own coding language. I do know that. Um, don't see the name. Of it. I guess the move, move, move language. Move. That they're calling it move. Yeah. Um, Wow. Move was created to make it easier to write blockchain code that follows an author's intent without introducing bugs. It's called Move because it's primarily, its primary function is to move Libra coins from one account to the other and never <laughs> let those assets be accidentally duplicated. And that's why they called it Move. Okay. Um, let's see what else they have here. Incentives, rewarding early businesses. They want to encourage more developers and merchants to work with the cryptocurrency. That's why it plans to issue incentives, possibly Libra coins, to validate or node operators who can get people signed up for and use Libra. Wallets that pull users through the Know Your Customer Anti-Fraud and, and Money Laundering processes or that keep users sufficiently active for over a year will be rewarded. So not only do you have to get the person in the network, but you got to keep them in the network for over a year to get your reward. For each transaction they process, merchants will also receive a percentage of the transaction back. So, so again, that's how they're working on adoption. Um, subscription so services yeah. this is where we're looking at, again, just as your visa, if you carry a balance, this is what they're trying to do with subscription services on their sites. Um, mm -hmm. And this is, again, to monetize groups, you know, the Facebook groups and whatnot. That's a, a subscription-based services, but they're looking to kind of back end that with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so businesses that earn these incentives, incentives can keep them and pass them along uh, to other users in the form of Libra tokens or discounts on their purchases. Never cash back, though. No cash back. <laughs> this could create competition between wallets to see which can pass on the most rewards to their customers and thereby attract users. So wallet developers might offer you free tokens if you complete 100 transactions a year. Um, so how do you actually own and spend Libra through Libra wallets like Facebook's own Calibra and others that will be built by third parties, potentially including Libra Association members like PayPal? So this is how PayPal may want to get in the game. Uh, the idea is to make sending money to a friend or paying for something as easy as sending a Facebook message. That's what you do in WhatsApp, right? Mm -hmm. You won't be able to make... I'm sorry? You can do that in Facebook Messenger as well. Yeah. You won't be able to make or receive any real payments until the official launch next year, uh, which you can sign up for early access. So there's Facebook Messenger, there's Cash Apps, you know, there's all of all of this stuff already. So um, yeah, it's hard to believe that sending payments can get any easier. I mean, you know, it just seems like it's so easy now. Yeah. Well, oh, hey, Dr. Keisha, I didn't even see you there. Hi, Dr. Keisha. Hey. I slipped in there, sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. I was just like, you know, all of a sudden we see you here. So this is what Tawana sent. So this is in um, conclusion. 
reasons why Facebook Libra coin isn't a cryptocurrency. So they say here uh, it's not censorship resistant. Facebook is legally required by law to censor certain transactions. It's not borderless. This is because they will be permitted to block transactions to specific countries like North Korea, Iran, and Venezuela. It's not neutral. The fact that it isn't borderless means Facebook coin can't be neutral to every human on earth. Mm -hmm. Not public. They can't be public. They can't create public APIs, public transparency due to laws. And it's not open. They cannot give you access, extract it, or sell it to someone else outside of the Libra platform. So thank you so much, Tawana, for sharing that with us. And I'm going to open up the floor to additional comments. Okay. Um, Eric mentioned something earlier that I, I, I just look at that to me really encompasses this. And it is the antitrust issues. Um, where, you know, I, I remember back when cable television first started, we had this company, Cop Cable. I mean, they're still out there. But they offered horrible customer service. If you had a problem, just deal with it. There's nothing you can do with it, you just deal with it. Um, I look at this with Facebook and this move, and listen, I'm gonna be honest, there are people in certain countries, um, this is really gonna benefit them. You know, um, this is gonna benefit them, this is gonna help them out. They have problems with sending money to relatives and paying these really high remittance fees. And this is going to benefit um, people. I, I, I look at it overall where, um, it's just not a trustworthy company. Mm -hmm. it, it, like, there's, like there is not. And, and I'm, I believe that power is best used when it's balanced. So I, I, I really struggle over giving balance. I mean, giving more power to a billion dollar corporation that is then linked together with other billion dollar corporations. Um, I just don't see that overall. Uh, yes, will it help some people? Yes, but overall, Will it be a best, Will it be a great thing for everyone? I'm of the opinion, no. I mean, you know, you can prove me wrong, but that's well, it. we we also want to go back to the original reason why uh, Bitcoin was created mm -hmm. in 2008. The financial meltdown happened. Why did it happen? Because you had a few banks doing reckless things. Yep and making bad decisions and we as a taxpayer had to bail them out right the the uh, otherwise the whole financial system would have melted down because you had a few banks a few companies basically acting crazy now we have swung the pendulum back to this one company right. who has gathered all the other big companies and said hey let's start this association in switzerland and let's do what? The same thing that we did 10 years ago. Like we didn't learn anything from the bailouts sure. and the financial meltdown. I think that just based on the fact that we started today's meeting the way we did, right? By contemplating whether we were going to hit record or not and post it to Facebook, like <laughs> we always do with these meetings, right? Mm -hmm. We never hesitate. But the mm -hmm. fact that we understand the reach of Facebook, the power of Facebook, and the censorship that they already, the power to censor that they already have, mm -hmm. that we had to say that before we started talking. Mm -hmm. That alone tells me there's a problem here. I agree. It's, it's a big problem. And, and Eric, like you said, people will be benefited. People will benefit from it. Absolutely. But that the people benefiting from it is small compared to the people benefiting from it, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> we talk about the money to be made. Those are the people benefiting from All it. Right. The fact that I can send a couple of bucks to my cousin in Liberia is minimal compared to the money these people are going to bring in. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to figure out a way to, to help balance this out. I don't know how we do it. I mean, I don't know how we complete with, compete, compete with you know, all of the names of those founding members that we just talked about, but, but we've got to figure out how we, how we educate in a way to mm -hmm. let people know what this really is. It, right. almost, it almost reinforces BBC's mission and why we exist, mm -hmm. right? How can we do our part 
to help balance the scales even a tad bit with the we, we may have. Yeah. And, and Tawana, that was exactly what I was taking in from all of this is that, you know, now that Facebook is muddying the waters as to what the basic definition of cryptocurrency is, now we'll have to start back at blockchain 101 all over again yeah, to clarify point. the error. So I guess one big deal thing that's going to help us as CBS is that we have Facebook putting this wrong information now so that gives us content number one for something to correct and have people's ear now at the very least you know what i mean um they will have heard about libra good bad or indifferent you know but now we can clear just um clear up all the uh, miscommunication and the misunderstanding um and and it gives us a jump off point the people will at least know what we're talking about <laughs> have some interest in what we're talking that is that, that is the good thing that has come out. i do agree exactly that now that. when you say the words cryptocurrency people won't look at you like huh yeah. right mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. like the young lady in jackie's picture they <laughs> they won't look at you like what you know <laughs> they'll actually know what at least something about it because they've exactly. heard the term before so mm -hmm. in, in in that regard you know they've helped us right yeah. to be able to, to start the conversation yeah. um but but what's also interesting is will they lift their crypto ban, right? So, you know, for the last six months or so, they banned every other company from talking yeah. about blockchain and cryptocurrency. Now, it's gonna so get worse. Platform, well, you know, now that they're, the cat's out of the bag as to why, we already knew why, but now that, now that it's out, will they open that back up for some friendly competition again? <laughs> nope, it's gonna be worse. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, so Tawana kind of stole my thunder, but I'm glad she did because I think that the, the next step for us is to figure out how we can make this change work to our advantage. Yep. What can we do as BBC to say, okay, we talked about it, we complained about it, we prayed about it, <laughs> now what do we do yep. to say this is how we can take this, this, this paradigm shift in crypto and blockchain and make it work to our advantage. I don't know the answer, but I know we are a group of some extremely brilliant people mm -hmm. that are motivated, educated, and we have the right will in our hearts to do the right thing for our people and all people. All people. Mm -hmm. So how do we make that difference and how do we make it profitable for us? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the real takeaway for tonight is, you know, after, you know, Sheree gave us this wonderful learning, because quite frankly, I've been too busy to read about Libra because I'm working on my own book. So I'm, I'm very thankful that actually she's made me sit down and kind of go through it in this very educational manner. Mm -hmm. um, but now that we know this, 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 this is the next step. This is yeah. the step that makes BBC our next level organization. I agree. I don't know the answer, but with Cherie and, and the other folks on the panel at the helm, we can figure something out. Yeah, that's our next course. <laughs> the free I, one I agree. Moving up to the uh, to prioritizing, that's for sure. We need to raise $10 million and get a vote. That's what we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> our, our one little vote, yes. <laughs> that's an expensive trust, vote. Trust me, Tawana, yeah, if we had $10 vote. million, I wouldn't be putting it in the Libra Association. Yeah, amen to that. <laughs> but I will say this. I think one, one solution, and it's a small one, is just like we tell our family not to put all their money in one stock, mm. or not even to put all their money just in the stock market to diversify, I think a part of it is telling our family, look, you may have to transact on Facebook Libra, but don't put all your money there. You mm -hmm. may be unbankable, but don't put all your money there. In mm -hmm. fact, only keep a very small percentage of your, your cash or your portfolio or whatever in that, you know, and diversify someplace else as best you can. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's one of the things. I'm, I'm very curious to hear and see what other, um, you know, what other solutions people solution have. And go ahead. That comes to mind is, again, when you were reading in the article with regard to um, vendors helping people utilize the coin. So mm -hmm. if we could be the intermediary 
which again, they have rightfully created just by being the, the system that they are, there's still people going to not know how to use it mm. or encourage them to use it. So they're going to need that handholding and to direct it like, here's how you do it, here's what you do, here's not what you do, all of those things. So there's a, a level of introducing an intermediary into a blockchain space, which is truly counterproductive, but that's what happened. Uh, that's the immediate thing I thought of because, again, they're not understanding this process. It is the same, I think we're talking about the same paradigm, and I talk about that over and over because that's all we've done is just shifted to a physical bank to a digital bank, and they're just used to now it's going to be on their phone. Mm -hmm. But just as you have the ATM tellers and all this other thing, we're going to have now an intermediary that's going to have to be a digital one as well. So that's a space that a, a job is created right there. Yeah, because that's going to cause, you know, how do I exchange? I want to do this. I don't know where to go. Um, I, I want to send money to my cousin in Liberia. Um, but I also want to buy this trinket from China. You know, I want to do all these things. And I have this one wallet. Does this one wallet work for me? How do I get a wallet? How do I connect my wallet to my Facebook? How do I, you know, where do I go to see my transactions? All of that is an educational piece. And again, that's what you have PayPal there for. PayPal does that for you. That was their whole thing when they came. Not only were they good at transacting, but they gave you that information and they could help you out. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to have a level of customer service that is no longer available to them because that's, again, what blockchain removes is customer service. Right. Now you have to include that back in there. Well, I've, I've always said that there would be customer service before mass adoption that, or that they would have to go hand in hand. I never believed, um, and you all know this cause you've been around with me forever. I, I, I never believed that there could be mass adoption without, um, without customer service involvement and without centralization and I'll put that in quotes because it's not true centralization of customer service, but you know, uh, there, there are going to be a few companies that come through and, and say, we're going to dominate um, customer service for, no, see, I guess I feel like Facebook doesn't have good customer service for as no, large of course as, not, they as it is, their customer experience is very poor, but people still use that instant messenger or, or using WhatsApp to transact. So that, again, gives another company the ability to be that customer support mm -hmm. entity that does give them the thing that they need, uh, even from the entity that won't give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can make that happen if, because Facebook doesn't really care if they offer great customer support or not. So there has to be a way for you to promote um, that you are the customer service arm of face of the Facebook Libra coin or can help people set up their wallets or whatever, or help vendors set this up without, um, depending on Facebook ads, cause they may suppress, you know, you, because then they think, Oh, th this, this group or this company is going to tell people not to use our, our coin at all, or, you know, they're, they're going to say certain things or have certain um, articles or blogs on their website that's going to affect us negatively. So, um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to, to see what happens. I'm looking forward to hearing people's thoughts over the next few days of how do we take this Facebook Libra uh, and turn it into an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I, mean, one thing, I mean, one thing that, that I will say, um, and I posted this in the group, in the knowledge group today, which is something that I, I expected it was going to happen, but the Nexo platform, the crypto mm -hmm. lending platform, they did announce today, and I guess you, the founder is going on CNBC tomorrow to talk about how they're going to now allow you to stake uh, Libra coins in your wallet and get 6.5% interest. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting because, you know, you can't, I don't know where you can get that in U.S. dollars. I don't think any place yeah. can. No. Um, but, but they do allow you, you know, uh, to stake other stable coins. But they're the first one now out of the gate saying, you know, hey, have their hand up saying, hey, we'll take Libra and we'll pay hmm. interest on staking your Libra there. So, wow. um that's so, what, so going back to the question of the day, one of the things is, you know, 
turning CBS into the place that people come to learn the game. Mm -hmm. now, right now, there are a lot of people that are learning real estate, for example, how to invest in real estate, how to invest in the stock market, how to set up their money so they can retire. Um, CBS or, or somebody else within the organization may set it up where, you know what, I'm going to teach you the, I'm going to do the, the crypto game, mm -hmm. teach you the crypto game and, you know, where, where the best deals are and how to play the space so that you can win. And they, you know, stay up on top of all of the latest information. Um, yeah. Yeah. So when I was, uh, I made the antitrust comment, I hadn't researched it. I did some quick researching. And this is an article that was in the Washington Post on uh, June 3rd. House lawmakers plan a sweeping review of Facebook, Google, and other technology giants to determine if they're so large and so powerful, they, they stifle com competition and harm consumers, making a new unprecedented antitrust threat for industry. And that doesn't even mention Libra, mm -hmm. right? So when you add Libra to the mix, you're talking about a gargantuan company mm -hmm. that deals with ad, social media, and banking. Yeah. So when I said that, I didn't even realize that there was already stuff going on in that space. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why I was saying Auntie Maxine. Maxine Waters has basically you put, she was the first one to put up the, um, the stop sign with that. And, you know, she runs the, the uh, Senate finance. Uh, it's the Senate or House? It's the House Financial House, yeah. Financial yeah. Services Committee. So she's, she's pretty powerful in terms of being able to, um, to, to cause some disruption with that. So, and I imagine Elizabeth Warren will be right there on the Senate side, too. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. You know how Elizabeth Warren and Sandy Sanders. <laughs> yeah, but, but here's the thing. So you mentioned Elizabeth Warren, which is, is interesting. Even more than Bernie Sanders on this is Elizabeth Warren is going to be on the debate stage. Mm -hmm. And if anybody would mention this kind of stuff, it would be her. I agree. In my opinion, even more than Bernie. So, and, and there have been people on the political side that have been pushing Elizabeth Warren over Bernie Sanders, and now they may have a problem when it comes to this kind of thing. So, you know. You, you know I, I, I have to ask, is, is it not shocking to any of you that Facebook went this far and didn't at all consult the SEC? That's what I was wondering. Like, well, they, not, are they, they, they already with them or something? That's I, a lot of big players. Yeah, to get Visa and MasterCard. That's on what I'm saying. They're not new. They're not new. To I, them. I, yeah, I think it's just it, because it's not flushed out fully, it doesn't have all those key terms that would signal for the SEC and all of that right now. They're, it's ubiquitous enough to be like, well, we're trying this thing. We don't know exactly what this thing is, but this, these are the, the components of this thing. And it's using very interesting language. And I always say, this is not, a, it's not legalese. It's kind of the white paper where you want it to be kind of on the line and people to go, ooh, but not be aware of like, let's ask that next question. You just can want to turn that page. And I think this is what they have built in order to do something. I don't know if this is the, the major focus. I just think this is a, I'm introducing a part of the conversation so that I can be a part of it. And I may be doing something totally different. That's truly what I think is going on because they just, you can't say crypto at this point. Everybody's talking about it and Facebook isn't. So now to be a part of the conversation, they have linked themselves to something that makes them a, a heavy hitter. They get some names behind them. They have this nice package, but we don't know what's in that package. I don't. It's odd at all. I don't find it odd. I think for me, it's back to the arrogance of it all. The <laughs> other thing is, if the SEC doesn't play, that's one country out of this game. There's a right. whole world. This is global. This is not about the little old United States who thinks we're so powerful. So if, if the SEC doesn't play, uh -huh. there's a whole global entity out there. Yeah, but that Europe, play. Europe probably isn't going to play either is the problem. And if you don't have the U.S. and Europe, yeah. yeah. Oh, so I'll, I'll say two things in that regard. First of all, I mean, they may have been with SEC. We don't know. 
Uh, they may have signed a confidentiality agreement with them and, and you know, they may have actually done some due diligence. But here's the bottom line. What they may have presented to the SEC may be one thing, but when it evolves to it be something else. Mm -hmm. The SEC may say, well, wait a minute, you said this, but this has become that. And that wasn't part of our initial conversation, in which case you now have re-engaged him in a new investigation or a new conversation because, you know, they have to, you know, comply with the laws. And as for being the U.S., I mean, if you look at most of those companies, they're U.S.-based companies. So mm -hmm. you're going to have these $10 million uh, plus buy-ins to this product to the ex expectation that it's going to be a cornerstone U.S. Let me face it, even though it's based in Switzerland, it's a cornerstone U.S. company. But if they're, if they're targeting if not, the if bank, is, we don't have the largest unbanked population. Now, we have no, 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 some, but, but we don't but, have the largest. No, I totally agree to that. Totally agree. But if the U.S. is not going to be able to, if they can't play in U.S. waters, they lose massive credibility. Their investors are going to be looking like, well, wait a minute, you know, we were counting on U.S. dollars, and we're not going to get that. And I think that's going to be a major blow to their organization. Yeah, I... I these guys spend tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars a year on lobbying. And you're talking about some of the biggest companies out there multiplied. Um, and, and Talisha and I are both in DC. So is Eric. We, we know the game here. You, you know, you get cushy with the right person. A lot of stuff can go through. A lot of stuff can go I, through. I think before the last midterm elections, I would agree, but the House turned over. And I think that, you know, they have a, a, a higher hurdle to jump over now than they did before the Republican to Democrat turnover. And uh, I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, you make an excellent point. But, you know, the bottom line is it's still a hurdle that got to turn over. And the SEC is not a legislative body. It's an, it's an enforcement agency. Yeah. Right? So yeah. they really, they should not be able to be bought. <laughs> right? Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. And you're uh, right about the SEC. That's different. Yeah. yeah, that's different from politicians. So you're right about the SEC. The SEC uh, and the IRS do tend to be the strictest and toughest agencies out there. So with that... Which is why if they got their approval, knowing that they don't have the trustworthiness score that's high enough for all of us to say, oh my goodness, Facebook's got a cryptocurrency, let's all get in, you would think they would have shared that tidbit that the SEC was behind them and gave the stamp of approval to help with the PR. <laughs> that, that's odd to me that they didn't, that, that that's not there. That's a great PR. You know, the SEC backs us. We all know how the SEC has been in this space, how critical they've been in this space, if they put the stamp on this, we would all relax. We, we published this to Facebook. We, <laughs> <laughs> so with that, um, it's, it's 9.30. I want to give everybody just a couple of final words. I want to make sure Eric and Jackie have a chance to let people know where uh, they can find out more about your books, get on the, the pre-list again. So let's start with Talisha, final words. Again, I think this is going to be an ongoing conversation. We will have to monitor and do our own due diligence. I think that's a lot of the articles that came out were instant visceral responses to um, untrustworthiness, you know, the scandal, that the hoopla, that we have to look at this kind of much more on a, a deeper level of why and how uh, this, these corporations are doing what they're doing and what that impact is. And if, again, if this is going to be um, something that has to evolve, where do we fit in this to that, that space? Mm. Eric? Um, oh, me or Eric? Eric oh, I'm sorry, Spence. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, one thing I want to say is everyone, uh, first of all, everyone, thanks for, you know, taking time tonight. This is really important for us to have conversations like this and allow, uh, allow everyone to become, you know, up to speed on a development like this so you can approach it with wide open eyes and ears so you can then talk to your family members about this. Once again, I said it tonight, I believe power is best when it's balanced. Um, so I 
I'm approaching it like that. I look to have it balanced in my own life. So that's something that I look to speak to my other family, family and friends about. I do have one issue too that I didn't bring us up, you know, tonight when it comes down to this, and that is this is peg to fiat currency, which we do know um, it could potentially devalue. And I wonder how what's going to happen with that um, in light of that. So that's it. Dr. Keisha? You know what, I'm just gonna really keep watching the space to hear what um, issues people have with this so that um, we can be the answer in CBS towards uh, responding you know, uh, appropriately in a, in a way that informs the public and educates the public on um, you know, what really <laughs> cryptocurrency is and how this is not that. Um, so yeah, so that, that'll be my take is really watching this to see how I can kind of, come up with something that uh, helps to educate the, the public in the, in the true sense and the true spirit of what cryptocurrency is and blockchain technology, what it really brings. Tawana? Um, I, I think my takeaway from this is that I want to watch closely those, those founding companies. You know, what they start doing from a marketing perspective and, and products that they release and services that they release, I think it's going to give us a bird's eye view into this bigger picture because there's a bigger picture and none of us know it. We can all speculate, but there's some smart people that run these companies and there's a bigger picture that our brains probably can't even imagine. If we think it's as bad as we think it is, it's probably a million times worse. Mm -hmm. And so we just need to be very, very um, aware, very aware in watching how they play in this space and in their regular spaces because it's all gonna tie in. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take that list and just start researching those companies to see what they do and what services they provide for us. Because a couple of them were holding companies. So it's only, only God knows what, the, you know, all the services they provide to us within a holding company. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be interesting to see what those companies are. Yeah. Jackie? Um, I think Facebook has shined a light on cryptocurrency and blockchain, where a lot of people weren't really paying it any attention now, because Facebook has done this thing that they're doing. Folks are going to be more interested, and they're going to need more information. So it could be an opportunity for us to get in the space a little more in terms of educating and training people. Um, so that we can get to our one million mark. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna uh, look for opportunities where we can further educate and train people on the blockchain and cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Great, and your book, how do, how do people oh, get on the list again? Uh, at info at blockchainlearningcenter.com. Perfect, uh, Guthrie? So great conversation, everyone. I really do appreciate the, 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 the wisdom and the intellect that's been brought to this conversation. Something that occurred to me, though, was that we could possibly do, it may not be necessarily a proper generating exercise, but you know, we need to educate our legislator, legislators on this issue. And we could write the uh, Congressional Black Caucus as an organization and as for a meeting. Uh, there's a congressional blockchain course. I've been to a number of the uh, blockchain caucus events, but there's not one African American on that blockchain caucus. Oh wow! Uh, so we need to we need to maybe educate our legislators on how we need to be addressing this issue, and that could really put BBC in a spotlight. Um, so we would need to do a lot of homework and a lot of presentations. I know two congressmen. Uh, Cedric Richmond and Sanford Bishop and uh, the, I don't know if he still is, but the president of the CBC Foundation. And if we want, we can start trying to, you know, make some calls, set up some meetings, to send a team there to kind of, you know, shed the light on this and say, this needs our, this needs our attention, this needs your attention, and we're here to be a subject matter expert and a resource for you uh in your duties as legislators and our representatives you know with our taxpayers dollars uh, That's a great so, idea. yeah so we, we can we can talk about that maybe put together a planning team see how that works out um as for me for those who think it's joined my book is coming out august 5th um blockchain or die which by the way i mentioned in two uh, sections the um, bbc 
So you, uh, we're in the book. Mm. Uh, nice. <laughs> you know, yeah, awesome. I mean, I, I could not include us in the book because we're doing so many wonderful things. And I think we're going to grow to be an amazingly powerful and strong organization. So, I mean, right now it's kind of grassroots, but it's not going to stay that way. When people are like us in the call, doing what we do, you know, writing books, doing trainings, you know, uh, organizing events, uh, conferences, it's just a matter of time that, you know, we're going to become the preeminent blockchain organization, not just for our people, but, you know, across the world. Globally, because, yeah. You know, we need this across the world. And when I, when I travel to every country, BBC is going to be there either in my words and in my presentation, or some of you will be there with me. Right. So it's it's the, the time is, is here. We are the people to make it for it to happen. And um, uh, I just encourage you to support every, each one of us. If you want to talk about my idea, Sheree, we can go offline and chat about it and um, we can you know build from there. Perfect. Perfect. So I will say a few final words and um, and then. Um, make one announcement, which I'll include Eric Spence on, and then we will uh, head out. Um, the good thing about this is that Facebook and all of these big companies have officially put a stamp on blockchain to say that blockchain and cryptocurrency are not going anywhere. Three, four, five years ago, people weren't really sure you know, you, you had the Silk Road issue, you had, you know, the FBI <laughs> stinging, uh, you know, people and, and things like that. We know today with this, the good thing is we know that Facebook and all of these big companies has put a stamp on this in such a way that we know it's not going anywhere. I've continuously said that um, the statistic says it's going to be a $3.1 trillion industry. Facebook being in this, even though they use the term crypto in, uh, improperly, has probably tripled that $3.1 trillion mm -hmm. just with this one and not. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Think about the global reach that they have. And now all of a sudden, more and more people are going to question what's happening here with cryptocurrency. Facebook has also made the path to mass adoption that much closer. Mm -hmm. You really think about it. So we talked a lot about the negatives, but those were three positives that I wanted to bring in to this conversation tonight. So as, as Tawana and Eric Guthrie has said, Let's think about how we can capitalize on this because you know me, I, everything is at the end of the day, how can we in some sort of way participate in this? And if there's a way for us to continue this conversation and flock and, um, and, and figure out how some of us can capitalize on this, if not the majority of us, then you all know you have my full support in making that happen. Um, my final comment with Eric Spence is that we are going to have a second virtual conference going to happen sometime in October, and it's going to be around opportunity zones, tokenization of assets, and fundraising for small businesses in the 21st century. So very, very excited. Eric is going to lead the team, but we need people who want to participate in putting this virtual uh, blockchain summit on. Again, about opportunity zones, tokenization of assets, fundraising for small businesses. It's gonna enable us to pull an audience that we wouldn't normally get. Mm -hmm. And it's going to enable us to uh, use our crowdfunding professional association liaisons, as well as pull in some new speakers uh, that we, you know, we are trying to uh, connect with. So, Eric, do you have any final words about that outside of a call for team members who want to assist you? No, that's it. I just want to tell everyone, uh, especially those who attended the last virtual, um, last virtual summit, it was just a great experience, and it's a great learning experience. Um, and yes, we would love to have as many people as possible that want to join in and help out 
um, with that. It, it's, it's such a great co-learning experience too. Like I really enjoy interviewing some of the people that, that to be frank, I'm, I'm a fan of. I mean, I mean, I'm, you know, fans of, so I, I mean, I, that was just great. So um, I just ask that for anyone, everyone to uh, please be a part of this. Uh, yeah, it's just a great way to accelerate your learning in the space and you'll really benefit from it. Yeah. If you have people that we should consider to be speakers or panelists, please yeah. send them to Eric. If you want to uh, moderate a panel or interview somebody, you all know me. I don't want to do all the interviews. I'd rather you do them, right? So please let Eric know if you want to be an interviewer. If you want to be on a panel, we always support our BBC members. So uh, please let Eric know if you want to uh, have a spot on any of these panels and, and let us know what your, um, your affiliations are and what you specialize in. And with that, we have been on here a long time, but it was a very, very, very good conversation. So I'm going to wish everybody a good night. Um, thank you so much. And uh, every fourth Monday of the month, we have this general uh, meeting where guests are invite, invited to come. So thank you. See you next month. Thanks, thank everyone. you. All right, everybody. Bye. -bye.